recorded November 15th, 2023. Payday. Payday. What's going on? What, Brody? Brody, aren't you on vacation? Edward? I, I, I am. I am still technically on vacation as you can see from my beautiful balcony view here i, totally I see. still in the dominican republic yeah i can't Absolutely. tell if that's your vacation spot or your palatial abode because yeah. <laughs> there are gardens behind you so yeah. there are there are Defender for gardens. Gardens. i mean he has peacocks walking in the background rod what's up brother it's no peacocks. i don't know hey edward where are you at i'm at the gorge Oh, hold on for a second. Are you guys at the gorge? What? Hey. In real life. Hey. Oh, crazy. Hey. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the gorge too. It's a coincidence. I didn't see him. All right. That's crazy. <laughs> I was standing I on the bridge. I was waving at him. He was he he didn't even pay attention to me. I, I did not pay attention at all. He's had too much of me this week. He's I've seen him every day since well, since when did you get here? Monday? No, you got here, buddy. I got here like, oh, maybe I did. Get, I don't know. Yeah, I've been here. I've been here for a week and a half. So, uh, when did I, what day is? It? I got it Sunday. Yeah. It's Sunday. So, we're talking about when did you get here? Where are we, Roger? At yeah, Rod, at the Gorge. Okay. Your Honor, I'm leading the witness. He's not. Oh, following. I'm sorry. Well, I, I I believe that we titled this episode correctly. We are at. This is the Microsoft Ignite edition. Whoa! I do have my. Yeah. Hey. How many? We had a. We have. We had a wonderful pre-day yesterday. We had a security. Security workshop slash hands-on lab for five hours yesterday covering covering Entra, Purview, Defender for Cloud, and Microsoft Sentinel. We had uh, we had some of our good friends, uh, Beth Bischoff, who was here last episode. She was with us uh, during the pre-day. Who else do we have? Edward, oh my goodness. He took over the workshop and delivered probably the most value. He talked about one of his favorite things yesterday. What, what is it? Oh, uh, I was forced to talk about Purview. <laughs> you even know what you're talking about? Do you yes. know what that is? Oh yes, my goodness. I do. It was amazing. It was amazing. So here's a funny story. I've been working on this workshop for like the past, you know, six months. I had everything aligned, had all my people available from the product groups to come in for their various sections, you know, enter a purview, Defender for Cloud, Sentinel. And then at the last second, the purview people just could not align those so myself edward and sarah young my teammate we had to be the purview people so we had to edward of course knows the stuff sarah and i had to get really good on purview in about oh 24 hours so oh okay. yeah i know that the resident purview expert here is brody but my first job at microsoft was to come in and do identity and azure information protection so a little bit of refresher to understand the new terminology and some of the other stuff. But as Roger was describing the labs and the breakouts, he failed, and I'm looking at him now, he <laughs> failed to mention that I also delivered a Defender Expert session at the end. No, that's what I was actually talking about because that's your favorite thing. Yeah. So I, I had to throw purview in there. I think I started off telling everybody I was a GBB with a focus on Sentinel as well as Defender Experts. And I'm here to talk about purview, figure that out. <laughs> but I answered the questions. I got stumped a little bit when someone was talking about being able to protect information and apply metadata and classifications on Linux, uh, Ceph uh, file system. And, you know, at rest, no, but in transit, yes, you can. So if the documents are being stored on that file system, in a manner that is, is one of the protected data files uh, that can have the metadata inserted into it. Yes, because we're not going to look at it there. We're looking at it when it comes out of transit. Uh, now, if you're looking at other things, you need to be looking at file integrity, monitoring, and stuff like that. Uh, but it, it was, it, it, the, the guy knew the answer. 
when you asked the question. Um, but I, 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 I don't BS. I gave him the right answer. Yeah, no, not not at rest. But we look at stuff as it in transit and it crosses over our enforcement and inspection boundaries, leaving from file systems, right? Because it has to be a native file system that we can scan. Like the easiest way to tell, if you can't scan it with AIP scanner to see, then you you probably can't do anything with it, right? Until it's okay. Trend. Now this is all making sense. I'm like, what do you mean we can't look at shit on? on so, yeah, it's just uh, uh, at yeah. rest. But you're, that makes sense. If we don't have a widget to be able to read the file system, then that yeah. makes sense. And so what you're talking about is almost data loss prevention. Um, of what, well, that was the second piece of the purview that okay, Roger had me do. So I did data yeah. protection at first, and then the second part of it was DLP. And I got a lot of questions. And it, oh, it, yeah. it helped me exercise some old memory muscles that I had because I learned those things by virtue of me having to be the, the lead for uh, cloud app security, which is sort of like AIP's yeah. cousin. You know, what you got, yeah. and it looks at it. So I did that. Uh, big shout out to Rod. The, the, we're going to share pictures later on, maybe on Discord yeah. or something. You got to yeah, yeah. see the lab setup. It was so well organized. Roger has a, everybody tell, bragging on his voice, like he has a radio voice. He couldn't get enough <laughs> of it. Right? And um, uh, you get to see people here, man. It almost feels normal. It's crowded here. Yeah. And the way yeah. you can tell if a conference is successful, go look at the bars after the concert. <laughs> Every bar around the street is full with people with badges yeah. and happy hours and breakouts. Uh, we keep getting invited to dinners. Big shout out to Mort, guest of the show, friend of Martin. the show. Nice. Morton was here. Yes. Oh, man, we had a great time. He took us to a steak place, man. I, he knows how to entertain. He is a great dude. I got to meet him in person. He's a he good a dancer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Not uh, really. And so we, uh, you know, and then the crazy part about it, I'm running ragged. I'm spending time between um, uh, between where are we right now? Seattle and Redmond because my team breakout is in Redmond. So I'm driving between over there, having to present up there and that. But we, we got some good stuff. The Defender experts had huge amount of acceptance. I mean, Rod Ro tried to pull me off stage with a big hook, but he couldn't because people <laughs> kept asking questions. <clears throat> We were on a time schedule, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, we got to go. Yeah. Go. Okay, so you, so you hosted, was it an hour across no. all these? Tell, no, me more about, so, tell me more about this. So, so this, this is a uh, workshop that I built that it it's actually probably, if we did it right, it's going to be about a day and a half workshop, but I condensed it down to five hours. Oh, so wow. okay. What we ended up doing this year, the, so the people that attended the pre-day, they actually paid extra. Their organizations paid extra for them to actually be here and sit in a seat for five hours, right? Uh -huh. So they're here. We have to. I wanted to give them extra value. So what we ended up doing, instead of just creating some hands-on labs and having people just go at it themselves, probably the first 30 minutes, we would have uh, people from the product team or people that have actually at from Microsoft that have worked with the product to stand up and, and introduce and talk about some tips and tricks and go through potentially some extra enrichment around those hands-on labs, uh, those tasks that they'll do as part of the hands-on labs. So by the time they get to the hands-on labs, they're like, they're going through it, but they're like, oh, this is what they talked about. Oh, this is that extra stuff, right? So it, it's a workshop and a hands-on lab at the same time. And we did that for all four sections, Intra, Purview, Defender for Cloud, and Sentinel, tying it all together. So, you know, from the whole cloud perspective from zero trust we're starting with the identity and then we're going all the way to the final last mile security for sentinel to catch all the stuff that everything else misses nice okay and so this is five hours straight like five hours straight. Wow, of course, guys we had we had work. five ten minute breaks every once in a while but yeah, well, i would hope everybody... so i couldn't listen to you two drabble on for more than an hour well we we we, we <laughs> kept the we kept the, the 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 color commentary down so people could focus on the labs it had to be about 100 people in that room, man. And they were attentive, and we didn't have very much attrition at all. A couple of people that went out to take a business phone call, generally when that happens, they don't come back. But I just sort of watched the crowd, so when someone got up, if they left their backpack there, they wanted to come back and do the lab, right? Uh, everybody presented well. Big shout out to Corinne Brown and uh, Beth Bischoff, who, who delivered the Sentinel and created the segue for me to talk about Defender Experts. And the audience was like, what? 
Microsoft offers a first party security service where you can do oh, the hunting man. and the XDR. So I picked up like seven, eight leads. Um, and even with the purview stuff, I got pulled to the side and said, hey, we got this problem. Can we talk about this? How do we do this? And uh, Corinne and Beth said the same thing. After Sentinel, uh, people were coming out and say, hey, we're, we're in the middle of a transition. We're doing this. We're doing this. The Defender for Cloud things also. Uh, Corinne's a Defender for Cloud expert. So they were asking her about Sentinel as well as Defender for Cloud. Um, it, it, it was very good. It, it, it brought back feelings of like the way things used to be when you would go to these conferences. I saw some old yeah. colleagues I hadn't worked with in a while. It was good stuff. I had a good time. And plus, you, you get the leaders that have per diem that's buying all the drinks. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, and, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Hey, guys, that sounds amazing. All right. Uh, well, I'm really happy you're able to host that. I'm glad you had such great attendance. I'm glad you're and, able to learn all about compliance 24 and, and, hours out and uh, realize how how deep the subject is edward information well, and, security go figure and that was just that was just a pre-day right so for everyone wondering if microsoft ignite will ever get back to its original glory there's hope because we have almost 4500 people here this week for microsoft ignite and that's a pretty large crowd considering what it has been and we mm -hmm. heard all day all day yesterday people that had been here last year and had given the feedback that they what, for whatever reason, didn't like Microsoft Ignite. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't what it didn't meet their expectations. They are already talking about yesterday that it already feels like the old Microsoft Ignite. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to bring that back. The funny thing was, I thought the, the people that said they hated Microsoft Ignite last year, they took a second chance and came back this year. <laughs> so I'm glad they came so they could have, they could actually see the difference. That's awesome, yeah. guys. And um, oh. good, good, good tech. Um, you know, everything wasn't perfect. I mean, the line to get the free backpacks was down the street out the door. Yeah. So I were they I, made out of one hundred percent recyclable material? I don't uh, know. When I when when I, we finished the cast, I had to go get mine. I have I have tickets that you can come pick them up afterwards. And they were stitched them with uh, custom stickers based on three choices that you had. So that's that was all right. The swag is, you can tell that the that the customers and the and the attendees are giving it a chance. Uh, to be fair, it seems like Microsoft wasn't sure, so the swag wasn't on par for what it had been. Um, lots of people here didn't have to wonder about how to get around. You got you know directed to places fairly quickly. Uh, once again, you, I, I can't overstate how well you know Rod kept the. The, the, the sessions strictly on point, on time, um, very little food pause or, or, or mishaps with the lab. I think the whole entire time I was there, I saw like two machines that may have had an issue. One of them was the guy that kicked the damn wire loose with his foot and wonder why the system went down. Like you kicked the wire. Yeah. Um, well, we kind of have to make, we kind of have to give a shout out to our uh, lab provider. So we've talked about, I think a couple of weeks ago about these new Microsoft applied skills where you can go online and, you know, there's an applied skill for Microsoft Sentinel. It pulls up a, an actual VM, an actual environment, so you can have hands-on with Microsoft Sentinel. It's the same provider for our labs this week at, at Microsoft Ignite, and that is a company called Skillable. They're doing all the stuff. Yep. So they do an excellent job. Bill, big shout out to Bill at Skillable. Hey, he, 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 yep. He's all right. They got it done. Uh, I got to meet... Charlene, who's at, uh, she's in charge of a, the security portion at uh, learn.microsoft.com. I got to meet her. Uh, I got to meet Sarah. Uh, she was on a show about three weeks back in person. I got to meet Rod's boss, big old tall dude. Didn't realize he was that tall. You know, looking up at him the whole time. Was that Joey? Is his name? Joey. Yeah, he was really nice. Uh, and, and then some folks I haven't just seen in a while. Um, a little bit gassed because I, I also had to go to Redmond. My team's in town. Had to present there. Had to entertain partners. So, and so, he rented a tank to drive around. Yeah, rented a tank. What'd you get? So, Big Suburban or what? Uh, <laughs> you so, guessed it. So Suburban XL. Yeah, yeah, I could see you doing that. Yeah, yeah. and then you're but the I was, I, yeah. I was ferrying He's people around. Pedestrians everywhere. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> 
I had to get out of the car and was pedestrian stuck in the wheel well. Like, grab his leg, pull him out of there. You know? Um, yeah, they're everywhere in Redmond. And that's and that's how he met so Satya dominant. in person, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> no, just kidding. This is my this is my last day at Microsoft. <laughs> Um, or, or in the free world, yeah. Well, the reason why I asked about the swag was because, uh, um, like, tomorrow and the next day, it's B-Sides Calgary, a much smaller oh. security conference compared to, to what you two are in. Um, but when Microsoft sent swag last year, we, we got 100% recyclable, reusable bags. And the word is that Microsoft's going zero plastic on swag. Yeah. Right? Yeah, They're yeah, going yeah. all re... What's the word? Good, you know. Proper material. Yeah. Recycle. It's called recycle. Uh, yeah, or yeah. no, that's it's that's not. You know net what I'm zero, saying. Zero, whatever. That's yeah. zero. That's zero swag, right? So I'm, I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if um, it's different moving forward. But then so all the other apparently next year there, they're going to go even so. further. So the speaker shirts, the um, the the backpacks actually have holes out the sides, <laughs> and the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the bags turn into speaker shirts. So it's it's all one thing. Yeah, it, if you, actually the, the shirts are going to biodegrade while you're wearing them on stage. You still see the chest is going to start coming out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just don't worry about Seattle. They'll if you get yeah. get wet, they'll fall off. They'll fall off. Um, you know, there are a bunch of announcements for us to sort of, you know, recant or reiterate or regurgitate what's going on. Give me caught back up. Just a lot. I think we're going to have a a, a post night show. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've heard so far, Rod is on a different channel. Uh, and probably hearing more that people are super excited about defender.microsoft.com, the new URL that brings you in. Sentinel's embedded into the, the portal now. Um, Defender experts made some some announcements, which probably helped uh, garner interest in what I do now. Uh, and the book of news came out fairly quickly. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good energy. Um, one of the things I used to notice that when folks would come to, to these things, you pay money to come here, but they would be detractors, right? Uh, once again, security code policy eating the air, AIs eating the air. Um, but the the core products are still very much. There's still not a a huge adoption of the purchased products. A lot of the people here have purchased E5 and purchased it was the advanced SKUs, but the deployment seems to be still an issue because between purchase and deployment, you have a skill gap deficit, right? Someone to do it. So I like it because I talk to everybody from CTO, CIOs, incident responders, uh, people in the trenches, a lot of uh, sim operational people doing it, doing the uh, doing the uh, the Sentinel session. A lot of people transitioning to Sentinel, um, and 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 the breadth of, of what was going on. So it was good just to hear the customer voice. I, sometimes I think we we were in a vacuum echo chamber. Yes. Uh, and, and now, and I have some interesting situation scenarios that i told the, the 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 customers email me all the details and make sure you put met you at a night all capital letters in the subject because i got a rule that'll pull it into the box i'll be able to see that uh, got to see uh we got to work with uh well meet with mona from blue buoyant oh nice and, i bet she's a riot uh you know i she she came in virtually. I've hung out with her before. She is a riot. Oh, virtually. Uh, as I as she was talking, I I asked a question and she stopped. She's like, "Is that Ed? I know his voice. When are you gonna get me back on the show?" I was like, "Christmas. Get your dance on, right? We got a party yeah. coming up." Um, Ricky Simpson from uh Cyber Corn got with him today. That was in pretty person? good. Yes. Oh, so you you could hear him. Shout out Ricky, no, he, you know what that joke's all about. Because he couldn't get his headset working the last time he was on the yeah, show. Right? Yeah, he's, yeah, him and his boss, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, he was here in person. Dude, he's a stout dude. He's he's red-headed Irishman, tattoos all down his arm, man, barrel-chested. Okay, Funny I did all see get him out. today then. I did see him today then. Yep. Did you yeah. close down the karaoke bar with him or what? Uh, this is doing today. We're going to close down tonight. Okay. Okay. So it's in Redmond, right? It's we're flowing between Redmond and Seattle. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I I was just there recently, and so I know for no good reason all the latest bars that are open in uh, Bellevue and Redmond. So it'll be interesting to hear where you gentlemen end up. Yeah. Here's here's the craziest part, and I give it back over to Rod. Um, 
while I was in Redmond with my team for uh, off-site and airlift or whatever, there was some training going on that Beth is in that training right now, actually, think about it, she's presenting. There's 150 new hires in that training, SSPs and TSPs. They're being trained up. And um, mm. Mm. that speaks of something, right? right? It does. Like, yeah. An opportunity. For opportunity, I think, is yeah. the big one, right? Yes. I don't think we understand right yet what some of this stuff's going to cost, but yeah. Preparation. Yeah. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the potential, the potential of impact and value coming. Uh, as as our good friend Noodle said in the chat, co pilot for everything, I think is uh, let's part of it. see. Co pilot for. Yeah. And in fact, Ed mentioned just a little bit ago, he said security co pilot. It's actually co pilot for security. They changed the name. They changed the yeah. name. <laughs> it, and if you look at our announcements this week at Microsoft at night, it is co pilot for whatever that thing is so we, we're okay. defend, we're defending everything Once okay so that's going to be the kind of the, the pattern mm -hmm. co-pilot for microsoft 365 co-pilot mm -hmm. for github okay yeah cool. defender for right. x defender for this defender for that so they go on everything of like ed of the house of ward you know <laughs> and, the, and there you go uh and then you know what i i it, I got to say this. I mean, I enjoy doing a podcast with you guys, and it just seems like it's sort of abstract. But to finally meet Roger in person <laughs> was great. My wife was like, oh, you with your little play date buddies, your little podcast friend. <laughs> like, it's, like yeah. we've been, it's like we've been friends for years. It's like we've been friends for decades. So oh, it was yeah. awesome. Oh, Good yeah. time. Guys, that's so I, sweet. I think, so awesome. I, I think if I want to give it away, we actually hugged when we saw each other first. For the first time. <laughs> Big old hug. It got awkward yeah. after a while. Like, they're still hugging yeah. 60 seconds. I, I didn't know if it was okay to let go. <laughs> I know. Check you don't want to be back pockets. You, know? you don't want to be the friend and let's go first, right? Because you're not committed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're still great. working that out. Yeah, we're still working that yeah. out. Um, I, have to, I have to go to therapy. Yeah, me too. Already. I, 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 oh, I got my therapy right here. Oh, yeah. There you go. I, I had too much therapy last week, gentlemen. Too much rum and sun. So I'm on uh, healthy drinks now for a little while. Well, you don't look day. very tan. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't sit in the sun all day because uh, my uh -huh. wife's taught me that uh, that's bad. Uh, so I do a good job of uh, balancing that. And that's good. Great. Yeah, but you're a gardener, so you have to watch out for that, right? I, I do I do I keep my yeah. hat on I put on my put on my sunscreen you, you know we got an umbrella you know when you're in the pool and yeah. you're in the ocean you know you're under the you're under the yeah. sun um, but it was gore it was like I don't I don't know what it is um, Fahrenheit but 30 Celsius like all week like just a little bit of rain it was just a gorgeous week or so out here it was out there out here out here because I'm still here totally um, but yeah, so I'm, 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 really, I'm, anyway, I'm really, I'm happy to be back. I'm really happy you two got to meet. I'm happy you two got to run oh, this. We're happy you're back too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, man. We, we missed you. Ready. Well, we Edward's been making fun of me. Thank you for saying that. Edward's been making fun of me the last two episodes because I've been listening because I'm a valued listener, um, and, uh, and, uh, su and supporter of this amazing experience. And Edward's tossing shade out left, right, and center. Where's Brody? Oh, Brody's the easy one. Brody's the not pushover. And I'm like, oh, wait, all right, Edward, I'm coming back. I'm coming that, back. That was not shade. That was me putting out social honey pots to see if you're listening. <laughs> I was listening. But those, I was those were Easter eggs inside the episode to see if you're listening, man. You've been, <laughs> hey, you get to do the same thing to me because I'm leaving the country next week and I'll be back whenever. All you good. Know, so we all need time away. I already have jokes prepared. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I, I had some jokes prepared. I was telling everybody that uh, you know me and Roger go back to the days when we were penetration testers and our our ATP was still Team Six. And uh. And everybody he got like slapped that. on that yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still tease. I said, if you saw me and Roger, you probably in a bad way. <laughs> and I even told the customers, it, we're cheaper before than we are after. Pay now or pay later. <laughs> people, uh, people really like that one. They like that one a lot. Yeah, and, uh, it was it was good, man. And uh, I, and you know, once again, I'll give it third because three is the trifecta, right? The way you that uh, Roger emceed the show, give everybody a check, handled everything, the mic fupas. Yeah. Kept making noise and echoing and everything. We got that taken care of, um, but oh, really, yeah. really good. It, it, the room was packed. Yeah, packed, full of people doing the labs, and people were getting getting through it. 
So it was really good. Um, well, consider that they paid extra for it, either them or their org. You have to be in that seat or you're not getting your money's worth. Somebody's going to ask that question. Hey, how'd that workshop go? If you spent all the time in the hotel, you're probably not going to come back. So. <laughs> and, 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 and I rate it by, we purposely stood on the exit, not to pull these people and keep them from leaving, but the amount of handshakes that people say, this is really good. Right. Yeah. Thank you for this. Uh, thanks for answering the question. And plus, big shout out to Ed, since nobody's going to give it. Ed provided all the swag for the give out. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. Yep. You had swag? Yeah. What do you have, man? Let's see if I have pictures. I might have pictures. I, I might have pictures. pictures. Yeah. And, uh, no, uh, I, I house full of stuff. My wife is like, get this stuff out of here. Take it up there. I shipped it up here in advance. I shipped like two boxes to uh, Roderick. And, uh, and so I said, hey, we got something to give out. And the guy that stumped me with the Unix question on at risk label and classification. When he asked me the question, my, my response was, give that man a mug. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know. So I had to think about it for a while. I said, okay, I get what you're getting at. And, um, had a bunch. We must have had some lawyers in there because they were. We were talking about non repudiation of files when they called for case for request. Right. How do you present those uh, inside the risk stuff when you do a analysis and you do an advanced audit? I was on point for that, so I did my research. I wasn't yeah, going to embarrass Roger. With insider risk, man, the adaptive uh, detections and policies that is huge. And you're right. The um, yeah, you say that non repudiation for uh, for legal case holds and whatnot. That's becoming more and more robust. So those are some big areas. Look at you learning things, Ed. Oh, look at this, Edward with Morton. Look at these pictures. Oh yeah. Uh, if you're just listening and you are There's able to, I'd highly recommend that you watch the recording and check out these pictures. These are awesome. Oh, nice, Sarah. Everybody's there. Who's that gentleman on the right? That is uh, Ross Boss. That's, That's uh, my boss, Joey. Oh, sweet. So he picked up the tab? No, Morton no. did. Morton, Morton did. did. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. Customer's taking you out. That's good. All right. Let's backpacks. see what else I have in here. Let's see these backpacks. Yeah, we should. I don't think I got pictures of the backpack. There's day, oh, day zero. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor asked a question while he's looking for pictures. No, Trevor, you're not going to be able to learn Copilot with an E5 licensing. Because there's the room. Go ahead. Yeah, cool. there's a minimum. There's a minimum seat count you got to have for telemetry coming in. They're right, measuring the, the amount of signal. If you do a single license, is not going to generate enough signal for Copilot to be valuable. If you want to learn the, the the fundamentals and the found stones of how regenerative AI works with being able to do security, you probably need to go through Roderick's um, Rodbot and how to generate automation with AI, but to consume the co-pilot is not a single license thing that you can lie about. Not even do it. Oh yeah. There's Beth, Beth and, and here. And oh, there's a bigger picture. Oh, and who is it? Ed Walt. He's shorter in person. Uh, I'm tall as Roderick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Roger like six seven. I was like, dude, you the same height as I am. <laughs> this one's for his boss, so his boss knows that he was he was yeah, selling. Yeah, you got to get one of those. Yeah, uh, captivating the whole audience. Look at that! Look at that workshop. And that I love awesome. that. How yeah. much time did you gentlemen spend on this prep? Oh, who hacked? I got one of those. Yeah, yeah we gave time? that away at the end of the day. Yeah. Look at that! Isn't that great? That it was just so awesome. I didn't know you guys had a whole five-hour thing planned. Like, I knew you two were going to be there, and I thought Rod would do, like, yeah. you know, some Roddy thing, but it was going to be, like, an hour talk. Well, I, I, had a, I had a session today with Richard. We talked about security and AI, and I have a session Wait. tomorrow with the Purview folks for uh, the AI stuff that we announced this week, so. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I got to check all these out. Look all at right. that. Look at that. He's telling jokes. Look at that. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Nice shirt. Looks warm. Sweater. There's Sarah in the background. Go back to. There's Sweater. Sarah. Oh, there There's you go. Sarah. Yeah. She's funny. <laughs> she She's about she has a tall. response for you. she has a response for you. you, you she has a wit, a yeah, British yeah. wit about her. Oh, there's a good picture. Uh, nice. noodles. Like, what is the minimum seat count for uh, being able to be part of the security EA, uh, co-pilot EAP? Uh, greater than one, but less than a million. Um, it is case by case, but it's 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 not a labable thing where you can just throw it in your environment with ten users and work. 
That's that's not a thing. Mm-hmm. And Trevor says I'm Trevor says I'm six one. Whoop de doo, <laughs> Trevor. I'm representing <laughs> the short people. Yeah, we don't know what that's like. <clears throat> no. Hey, listen, guys, guys if, gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'm just just getting back in from you know basically turning off my phone for a week. I know you want to do a follow up show on like important announcements and all that jazz, but could you educate me and our listeners on maybe yeah. Cool stuff that you can talk about right now, just high level. I'm not looking to stump the chump on a Unix file system integrity question or anything. But I love so, co- yeah, so a couple high level things. So, so from a security perspective, today was the keynote for all the AI stuff. So Sati came on and some other uh, folks talk about the AI, AI stuff. Of course, AI is everything except tomorrow is our security announcements. So while all of our security blogs released today, a lot of them have to do with purview. Uh, how we're utilizing purview um, and the data aspect of that to control the AI stuff and help organizations secure AI usage with purview. Um, There was also some announcements and stuff around, well, there will be announcements tomorrow. Blogs released today, they're actually announced tomorrow. They told us, hey, you you can't say they've been announced yet because you'll be lying. So they'll be announced tomorrow. The blogs are out already. we will be announcing tomorrow the unified portal where Sentinel exists within the Defender portal. The Defender portal will no longer be security.microsoft.com. It will be defender.microsoft.com. And Microsoft Sentinel is actually in that portal. And Security Copilot will also be integrated, even though that's not released yet. And it's still an early adopter preview it will uh still show it will show up there i want to answer one thing for noodle though he keeps every every episode he asks what security copilot is going to ask what 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 it's going to cost for security yeah um i had that discussion today and my answer is the same we don't know nobody knows and and i have an answer noodle if you have to ask how much it costs you can't afford it (laughs) yeah he's got you there noodle you can keep asking, but I will, I will tell you this. I will be able to answer that within about three months, give or take a, mock, a Microsoft timeline that doesn't pan out. So, hey, yeah. you know what? Um, so, a cost aside, I mean, and Rod, yeah. thanks, for, thanks for breaking out some of those announcements to come and announcements pending. Um, you know, it's, it's great now being on the inside because at one point uh, or soon, maybe I haven't turned on my email yet. My, my group, the security service line has been told we're going to have access to play with the thing, right? To go yeah. pilot for security. But it will be interesting to see how we're going to enable our partners and related organizations to be able to trial this and learn about it. So I, I do know there is, well, there's a partner event coming up sometime next calendar year and so we'll have all that worked out by then so yeah and it'll be it'll be in conjunction with what we are also doing with defender experts because they're like cousins so while defender experts is human operated uh proactive threat hunting and instant response there is a copilot component of it but it is not the same and and copilot will be able to enhance and take lessons learned from what the human operators do so why I'm not a co-pilot TSP or GBB, I still get to get some of that, you know, stand next to you knowledge from those individuals that are on that team. I also learned something new about what they're going to do with the, 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 the talent that they're, that they're acquiring to make that team. I don't think I can say it on here. Um, I'll probably be able to say it in the next two shows about what they're doing to build a skill level up about it. So don't want to get in trouble. And I'll tell you why. More people listen to our show than we think. I don't know if we're catching on analytics because a lot of people say, I listen to the show. I see you guys. They were stopping us in the hallway. Oh, I love the show. Right? I'm like, yeah, Ed, quit, you know, NDA die bum and you're going to get in trouble. right? <laughs> Just PM to- stopping you. Hey, Ed, could you like, you know, Give us a sec to post the blog article. First yeah, one, one of the engineering people, one of the yeah. in, engineering PMs, like, "Hey man, can I talk to you in the bathroom?" As he has a <laughs> shank, as he has a shank in his hand, come into the bathroom. Let me have a word with you. Well, and it's that, and there are a number of people that listen to the show, and we say something, and even though they're part of that team, 
they've never heard it. So they have to go ask somebody and say, well, yeah, but we just haven't told anyone yet. <laughs> the They're like, where are they getting, where are they getting this? <laughs> they getting it information yeah. from, right? We're, we're like the investigative reporters. We get the truth. We get it to the people, what they want. I'll Amen. give the, I'll give the, I'll give the truth the noodle. You're not, you're not going to get co-pilot. You can keep on asking, you know, yeah. matter of fact, we're going to put you on the ban list that you cannot get it. Even if you pay a million bucks, that. especially not you noodle. Yeah. We're going to set up a policy <laughs> in purview, a permanent policy for security for noodle. Nobody. Yeah. Knows. Yeah. We're, yeah. He's on a, he's on a block list. R- block list. Richard so how, so like, uh, if, you're, if you're that popular, it sounds like you boys shouldn't have had any of your meals paid for you. And you're just being paraded around the streets. Like you're representing MSI experience. That's amazing. That's so many people. I, uh, I haven't paid for a meal. Good. I think I paid for a beer and I, I paid for like a breakfast sandwich only because nobody was up but me. <laughs> and, and I tell you, I tell you something else. Yeah. Everybody on the show know, I, you know, I advertise that I'm a runner. Roger can run. Oh, <laughs> did you have a race? <laughs> we, 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 Roger can run. On the treadmill. We, 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 we oh. ran side by side. On we the got next to each other. <laughs> and, and every time Roger would. Do the incline up, I do the incline up. When you do the speed, I do the speed. And people were looking at us like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what are they doing here? And, and you, they just see these two guys' feet doing this on the treadmill. <laughs> so we look like and, Looney Tunes. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Cool. And, uh, and and, and that, was, that was great. And then we both were exhausted. We sat down on the bench and looked at each other like, yeah, let's not do we that. Added up, what? You had it up to 11 or something. Yeah, 11 miles an hour. We were getting it. So was it raining the whole time? You boys couldn't go outside, or what? Well, uh, it was raining the first, yeah, for first for the weekend. But it's okay. just uh, freezing cold out, and it's like we're waking up at four a.m. because of being yeah. on Eastern time still. So, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm good now. I'm waking only up at five now. But then it's time for me yeah. to go back home. And uh, literally, I'm running on fumes, man. I trying to prep, do stuff, shake hands, seeing old team members. You can't go to the room because every every time you get ready to go to the room, eh, let's have a beer. <sighs> I got to the point I would take the beer because I didn't want to insult, and they just put it back on the bar and I drink it. <laughs> I just set it somewhere out of, I'll pour it down somewhere. It's like I, I can't drink another beer. Well, it's, that sounds real tough, Ed. That sounds real. Tough. It is, man. First yeah. world problems. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, we, we 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 slipped up yesterday during the the workshop, though. We suggested that every time someone said. AI this week that they should drink. I, I think a bunch of people <laughs> took it to heart. Turn to ignite. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They show up they in their make it. whiter than Edwards headphones and their faces because they had yeah a, they were yeah. rough rough night. There, there, yeah. there was some people. There was some people hurting. Stay yeah. hydrated, people. One water per one drink, and you're okay. I've been I've been doing that. That yeah. that is sound sage advice. <laughs> one whole bottle of water for yeah. sure. Actually, um, you know what I did for the for the um, meetup? Not that I was up late or anything, but you can buy those little liquid IV packs, those hydration packs, right? And so every morning, I poured those into like my water bottle, and I was like pounding that in the morning, and I was getting through the day. And a couple of the guys who were not as degenerate as I, who are not used to being up uh, till till one or two, and then having to get up in the morning and go to work, they're like, "Brody, I feel terrible." I'm like, "Oh, here, have one of these liquid IV things. It's like it's like Gatorade in a, you know, just a little packet." And then, and by noon they're like, I'm all good, man. Thanks, you saved my day. I'm like, yeah, yeah. gotta stay hydrated. So, yeah. so Trevor, yes, I, I I did a trail. I, I left downtown. Roger and I are in the same hotel. I went to Redmond to stay the night, and there are some trails. Uh, and yes, there, if you want to run trails, there are some places you can up in Redmond. Um, there's there's matter of fact, there's a trail path that'll take you. Um, I, I knew you were running trail. I didn't know you were a big trail guy. Uh, I gotta send you some trail shoes so you can run in. Uh, I got, I have your address because I shipped you stuff before. I'll ship you some trail shoes to be sending your side. They're great shoes. Um, yeah. And uh, Brody, you have trail shoes. I gave you, yeah, right? Yeah, I just wore them oh, today. Yeah. Uh, I don't trail run, but um, you got me the Gore-Tex ones. And it's mm-hmm. that perfect time of year right now where there's not it's not quite winter, you know, somewhere in between. Um, and so they're they're fantastic and they're 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 awesome, man. Thank you. And then um, to my team, I think I gave away like. I think I gave away like 10 pair of sneakers. I gave away 10 times, 30 pair of socks. Uh, I gave away like 15 jackets, uh, you know, and, and just, you know, you build goodwill, you know, and, and folks need those micro 
those micro acts of kindness to remember your face a little bit, right? Uh, people will remember a small gift before they remember the big gift. I promise you, right? Because mo most small gifts come right on time when you need them. Because there's a couple people that came up here. Is that why people right? like stickers? Is that why people love stickers as swag? Yes, yes. You were giving out the stickers at the thing. People were like, "I need one. I need one." Um, and that was that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't like stickers. I guess I'm I'm uh, I'm an expensive date. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but no. When, when we had dinner, you, what did you have? The salmon? Is the, that was it? The sea bass. Sea bass. <laughs> yeah. I I ordered a wagyu filet mignon stuffed with crab, overlaid with sea bass. Oh, it's no, I I did I did surf. I take advantage of that. You gotta eat all the seafood you can while you're out there. It's all yeah. It's it's amazing. Tons of great seafood out there. The shrimp cocktail we had at dinner was excellent. Oh, oh it was good. Yeah, yeah. That, that horseradish sauce. It's funny you say yes. that, gentlemen. I ordered one here, or I ordered one in the Dominican, and it was garbage. And my wife, yeah. uh, my wife picked me up shrimp cocktail at the store today, <laughs> just so she could make it up to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, well can't, you're getting shrimp out of warm water. Yeah. 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 Shrimp yeah. out of warm water. Yeah, yeah. it Ugh. wasn't. This wasn't the best. There was other. There was other food that was good, but. But yeah, um, I, have I you guys think... gone to the the um, oh what's it called? Shoot the uh, the crab pot. You, on the market down on the on the yeah. waterfront. Yeah, it's so touristy. We talked about it the other day. Yeah. We didn't okay. go right. Yeah, we just, yeah, didn't go. just yeah, just down there. Yeah, and, and fair boys. we thought about it. And like, oh, it's gonna be so many tourists. Everybody's in town because we want to go to have dinner. Like we'll be in line. They're gonna fry the fish in like eight day old grease. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I said, I'm not doing that. So we stayed in town. I don't know what we're eating tonight. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and to our listeners, this is more of like a fellowship show, letting you know that we're gonna we're gonna bring the technical stuff uh, once we get access to it and, and and really see it and give you guys some tidbits to go follow. Um, they're doing a pretty good job this year on. Oh yeah. You know, getting the information out, small stream, small stream, and then spreading it out. Um, I haven't attended any of the AI seminars. Have you, Ron? I gave one today, but yeah, uh, there'll be. Oh, that's where one. you were. Yeah, Richard Richard Diver, who's a friend of the show. Him and Driver. I had a. It's Diver. Yeah. Him and I. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people say it's Driver. Um, him and I delivered a. Uh, what was it? AI Security AI Foundations today. We had. Uh, Microsoft Ignite has some really interesting sessions this year. They're all sessions, they're all breakout sessions, but they're some of them are a little bit different. So Richard and I delivered a discussion session today. You literally invite in a room, I think we probably had probably 50, 60 people, and we invite people, we kind of uh, to, to provide feedback and ask questions. So it's almost like an AMA, except it's led by probably three or four slides to kind of frame what the discussion is supposed to be about and then invite people. So, but it's also a hybrid thing. So we have a Teams meeting going where people are logged in asking questions remotely, but people in the audience are asking questions as well. So it, that is really, I it may be one of my favorite types of sessions. There's also, um, everybody knows Sridhar. Sridhar has been on this show a few times mm -hmm. uh, talking about Microsoft show. Sentinel. He, I think uh, tomorrow he's doing, they have what's called demo sessions. Um, mm -hmm. The discussion sessions are 45 minutes. The demo sessions are 15 minutes flat. So you literally, they get up, they give a demo, talk about the demo, and they're done after 15 minutes. And they have to, they just, they cut them. And then they, <laughs> it's like a continual, then there's another demo. Uh, so that's, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to be interested to see how that actually works out. But I like that format. Uh, I've seen it in real life uh, at Microsoft, yeah. and it works really well as long as people hit the 15 minutes um, and they don't yeah. just extend because because it, it reduces, it forces you to reduce down to like the goodies, right? In yeah. those moments, the really cool things, you don't have to stretch something for an hour, you know? Um, so yeah. I, I can't wait to check those out. That sounds really what, cool. What's, what's the term? You, everybody gets 15 minutes of fame? Yeah. yeah. yeah 15 minutes go. of fame, get done. Uh, Yo, no, Trevor, I'm not going to bring in the NDAs. I've already been slapped on the back of the head. Um, and I'm going to be quiet. And, and that is impressive. You are hiking with a rucksack, 30 pounds. 
I, I, I generally do about 20. I can't do 30 pounds. And then um, someone, Richard, was asking about. Uh, yes. And the answer is yes. Go ahead. Go ahead and read that if you want. Yeah. Uh, Richard's asking about security copilot and KQL usage. So it's interesting. The reason why security copilot actually exists today, the initial reason was we simply wanted to build a a bot or a copilot that could produce KQL so our customers would kind of help eliminate that pain point. And then it evolved to what it is today. So it does KQL extremely well. And because it is integrated with your environment so you know uh, the defender stack and microsoft sentinel intune as well i saw a question about that a little bit earlier because it knows it's integrated with your environment it does know the tables it will produce the kql mm -hmm. queries with the tables that you have within your environment so it's it's extremely good at doing that yes brody so i asked this uh with the, the um pms when, when we were in redmond yeah and it's gonna be really interesting so are we, we're not going to really need to have an aggregation location for a lot of this material when you query um, the co-pilot of your choosing in order to get the information you need. It will go out to the appropriate tables itself and correlate that on your behalf, right? So where do you think that leads um, the need for log analytics workspaces and whatnot to actually correlate that data? Can someone get away, can an organization get away with just going... I, I, I doubt it because of data retention, non-repudiation, rest at state without manipulation rules are going to come. I think that maybe LAW will probably evolve from being hot storage to medium and maybe cold. ADX would go from would, would transform into a massive data lake of some sort, and things like basic logs and stuff like that would go away. But you you're looking at that's a very good insight on how that's going to work. I don't think that the, the ability to put just the pure data un, unchewed, because you know when it comes to LAW for, for Sentinel, you're basically chewing it over the analytics and you're spitting out incidents and alerts. I think it will just evolve to what it's used for, right? And that, that's my, Your take. My, my, my thoughts about how it's going to evolve, yeah. right? Because remember, we, had, we first had Sentinel, the only thing you could put it in was LAW. And then you yeah. had ADX, and then you had basic logs, and and then the archive was a subset of the way LAW worked, right? Yeah. I think that uh, now where that hot data stands, as you said, I have no idea how that even exists right now. I'm not that, I'm not in that realm of understanding. I get Rod to, to explain that to me one of these days. Well, I, I did see something this week about even additional data storage types we talked about or at least it was announced today as part of the ai messaging around uh the new fabric stuff right so all of the all of our data storage and consumption um pieces are just microsoft fabric and i think they're kind of building a bigger vision around microsoft fabric and how that all works um, but i did mm -hmm. see like i said uh, i think it's yesterday even a new cheaper storage solution um but consider this Security Copilot is going to be like anything else, like Microsoft Sentinel. Um, you can make Microsoft Sentinel smarter about your environment by ingesting those things that maybe it doesn't have. The more and different types of things that you ingest, you make it smarter. Security Copilot is going to be the same thing. If, if you are using Purview in your environment and you have that connected to Security po Copilot along with Defender, it's going to be a lot smarter anytime you add another component to it. So it's it, And it's not just framed around the Microsoft stuff. We'll talk about, I think, um, after the announcements tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit more about the extensibility, right, around Security Copilot and how even third parties can help make it even smarter in that respect. I saw uh, my good friends at Tanium, they're, they're having their own conference this week in Austin, and they're on board. They have, I think, on Thursday, they're actually going to demo um, their integration with Security Copilot. So there's there's mm -hmm. a lot of this in the works. Spicy, yeah. cool. Thank you for the answers, yeah. gentlemen. That's that's exciting. Yeah, and it's it going to evolve because you know even from the the manual perspective, you're still going to need a human. I heard that one of the best things. Security Security Copilot is not autopilot. They're very distinct, right? Because in a plane, you have a co-pilot. It's generally a commander 
three three stripes, ex military, and then you have the captain, which is four stripes, ex military, but they are pilot and co-pilot. But the plane flies on, flies on autopilot, and you, you, there, there is a distinct difference. Yeah, and so, people are telling you that the co-pilot is a guide; it is there to assist. It is not to fly the plane. You do not want it flying the plane because it will make decisions based on logic and not and doesn't have a sense of consequence and risk, right? And um, uh, uh, it was a some very good quotes from some of the people that were presenting. I tried to capture all of them, and, you know, give authors credit when I could, but I'm gonna keep it for myself, right? Plagiarism at its best. Uh, but it, that was one of the better ones. Security co-pilot is not autopilot. It is a co-pilot. It is meant to have a biological entity next to it. <laughs> autopilot is, I will fly the plane by myself, take off land, take off transit and land, right? And that was a very good analogy. And I think the person was ex-military, and a pilot that came up with that, and I heard it. So that makes sense. That, yeah. that makes sense, right? Yeah, I like that. Uh, you know, self-driving cars, think about that. Is that co-pilot or autopilot? Well, if I'm in a car that self-drives and I have to stay awake while it's driving, it's co-pilot. If I can take me a nap while it gets me to point A to point B, it's autopilot, <laughs> right? Now, yeah. People yeah. like, well, this self-driving cars, this is new, this is a rave. I'm like, self-driving cars have been around for 70 years. Like, really? Yeah. Rich people have chauffeurs. Yeah, they do, right? Uh, and so there you, there you go with that. When is okay, security so, autopilot coming? Uh, Roger and I are writing it right now. I, I bet. I bet you are. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, so I, okay. Okay. Great updates today. I learned a lot. I got a lot of reading to do. Um, sounds like we've got a lot of cool stuff coming tomorrow on AI and security. Rod, you got a, you've got this contents coming. Um, this Richard Diver thing was tomorrow, or is that today? That already took place. Richard and I today, myself, okay. some other from one of our V teams. We'll talk about the purview stuff tomorrow. Okay, sweet. And can um, and just you want to plug, you know. Ignite, like people can still register virtually and go back and watch recorded episodes. They can. I believe. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all of the episodes are recorded except for the demo sessions. I, so I yeah. even the thing that Richard and I did today is is recorded. And and I have to tell you, in forty five minutes we had to have between remote and in person we had thirty thirty five questions, and that was crazy. I mean, that was awesome. People are interested in this stuff. I, I I think more than anything I want to get across, though, is this Microsoft Ignite is by far different than it was last year. And I think we're really getting this thing back on track. This is something people are going to want to come to. I, I've mm -hmm. already put in the feedback uh, even about that pre-day workshop. People asked if they we could make it two days. They're already like, I'll pay for two days to come to Microsoft Ignite to have a two-day workshop. Sweet. And and I'm going to make sure if that happens, I'm going to be here too. I think that there's value. There's nothing that can that can replace someone tapping you on the shoulder and say, hey, can I talk to you real soon? Can I have, a, I have something I want to ask you about? Because there's something lost in a Zoom and Teams call, right? Yeah. When you're talking to someone, you get to feel the urgency, man. This is kicking my butt. You know, we're trying to figure this out. I had a situation where someone wanted to he gave me a scenario that they wanted their internal staff to be untrusted. Mm -hmm. So when they sent documents, when they created documents, all the documents were redacted for employees. But when they sent to the clients and our partners, it unredacted that so they would see. It was a, it was a financial company. It was a need to know. Nobody internally needed to know, but external people need to know because they didn't want to introduce the uh, opportunity for perceived insider trading. Right. So we sat out there. That's what Rod, if you were looking for me, he would not let me go. So we started yeah. going through scenarios and he's like, that may work, Edward. And I was like, yeah, it will work. We just spit our way to a solution now. How much is it going to be? He's like, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. But if, well, but at least we play in that sandbox, right? Microsoft's been making a lot of investments in that type of data and information protection security. So that's yeah. cool that you're able to have that combo and actually get that person inspired in that organization. 
And I said, I can't tell you because I'm not on that program team to tell you what is going to happen with, you know, with purview and, and the way that document detection and governance is working. But I love, I, I love Mission Impossible. Throw me out the plane to throw the parachute later. I'll figure it out on the way down. <laughs> right. You know. That's where that uh, that's where my idea of the backpack slash parachute comes in. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that disintegrates uh, <laughs> in midair. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor said if uh, if I was at night and I found you guys, I would ask a lot of questions. You can ask as many questions. One beer per question. And yeah. eventually return <laughs> on investment is gonna be real low. <laughs> Edward won't he, Edward won't drink that beer, but it, it's one beer per question. Yeah. One beer per He'll question. put it back I'm, on the bar. I'm I'm sort of pickled right now. And that's all I come from me. I'm a little bit pickled. So Someone taught me up. if you just walk around with like a glass of wine, you just keep chatting with everybody, and no one knows if you're actually drinking yeah. it or not. Or... I started walking yeah. around with a glass of water and put yeah, ice okay. in there. It was like I just ran with water. You should be but drinking water, but yeah. Mr. Old Man over here, I'm waiting for him last night. He goes in the room and goes to bed. Oh my goodness! What so time? I just meet Richard Diver last night for uh, dinner. Yeah. And then Edward, Edward's going to come along. He said, text me when you guys are going. I said, okay. I, I made a mistake. So we were up on our feet all day yesterday. I made the, and of course, still on Eastern Standard Time. I made the mistake of sitting on the bed waiting for Richard to get into town from Bellevue, from Redmond, to check into his hotel. It couldn't have been an hour. And I texted Richard and said, I'm not going to make it because I, yeah. You, you, You're just done. First, First rule, yeah, is do not sit on the bed to relax. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And that's do the not, because then Edward could have been the driver for you and Richard Diver. No, we were walking. When Ed's drinking, Ed parks the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <okay>. We walked <laughs> everywhere. That car stayed oh, in the garage. Insinuating. Good. Yeah. Speaking so, of which, it. Edward was our autopilot the other night. I drove everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Security <laughs> autopilot? Yeah. yeah. Noodle was asking about that. Sounds like it's Edward I, Noodle. Security autopilot, Edward, version 0 0.1, beta alpha. I, 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 dude, maybe because I'm getting older, I hate driving. And then okay. you're driving in the city and people have no sense of perseverance, it, of, of preservation, rather. They're just walking with their heads down and they don't have any light to say they can walk. Give no. me an Uber or a cab any day when I'm anywhere uh, outside my, of my regular city, especially in the Dominican, guys. Like, it was crazy out here. I didn't want to go anywhere near the road. It's like little little scooters and everybody's cutting each other off and passing on the right and passing on the left. Oh, if so, I go to the U.S., even if it's the U.S. and I'm from Canada, I, no way I'm driving. Somebody told yeah. me, hey, do you want to take the rental car to SeaTac? And I'm like, no. 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 Don't like I driving. I get in the man. Uber and that's it. I'm not yeah. even trying. Yeah. And I'm in this that's big it. old suburban XL Premier thing. At least that intimidated some people to get out of the way, but just driving downtown, man, it's, and there's so many people in town right now, and I'm like, yeah, park the car, we'll walk to where we need to be. And I tell you something else, it's maybe because I'm southern, it's cold up here. <laughs> <clears throat> it is. It's cold, and and the uh, temperature difference between Seattle and Redmond had to be eight to ten degrees. Even worse, yeah. When I went up, I was like, oh, my God, I'm freezing. But, hey, we're at the end of the show. We really appreciate our listeners, the new ones, the old sustainers that have been on, Trevor and Newell and everyone else. Um, I think we'll have more informative and things to go look at next week uh, as the night rolls through. We don't want to take the thunder, uh, and we want to give out accurate information. Um, we got some really good guests that asked to come on the show, uh, both teams that I've worked with. Uh, we're going to have Brian Hopper, and we're going to have Phoebe Rogers. Uh, they're the ones that sort of created the incident response. Uh, defender experts asked the experts. They asked to come on the show. Uh, we got a couple of others that have said, hey, can you guys find time for us? We want to come on and talk about it. She asked me today, hey, I want to come back on. And uh, so I think that um, I think that the show is doing what it's supposed to do. I think it's uh, it's, it's it's in it's in line and and. and because of our listeners that continue to make us better. We really appreciate it, especially when you guys give, give us hard stuff to make us scratch our bald heads and go, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out, though, right? Well, I'm bald. Well, Ooh, look at the rug. He has the mullet. Brody has the <laughs> mullet going on. I don't. I got a haircut you know, for a while on vacation, but, you know, we're at. He's, look, right he's looking like a Canadian Bobby Ricky. Well, <laughs> if you grow your hair longer, you the sun won't, you won't 
be bothered by the sun. So maybe that's a reason <laughs> that's to do fair. it. That's fair. Good uh, point. Yeah. That, I, no, I, gentlemen, I, Edward, Edward, these these guests sound amazing. Thank you for 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 organizing that. You're you're the man. Um, now next week it sounds like we're 50 50 because oh the US is on holiday, but Brody might try to do a Canada special if he can okay. make swing it. So we'll try. But right. we're out otherwise next week. So don't plan on it, but we'll we'll see what happens. Is that right, gentlemen? It, it is Thanksgiving week. We had kind of planned on just skipping next week, but Brody, if you want to do that, um, I'll try. Try it. Uh, yeah. When I'm sure you we? probably have somebody that wants to come on. Yeah. And we'll come on. Yeah. Chat about. Yeah. To- grab, totally. Grab one of your Canadian brethren that you know celebrate you guys' version of Thanksgiving. And, you know, you're free, right? There's at least a dozen of us that'll be working on that day. You guys so, have turkeys yeah. up there, don't you? Yeah, but it was like last month. Oh. Yeah. That's oh, there. Trevor. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, I've been deficient in Discord. I it did something on my yeah, that's something. No, no excuse. I will get back on Discord because people have asked me to get back on. They want to ask a question. That is that is a fail on Edward for not getting back on Discord. Uh that's I will slacking. Oh, you should get I, on Edward. What happened to your computer? Did you just blame a computer problem on Discord? Did you get Discord malware? What happened? No, I didn't get Discord malware. I um he got purviewed. <laughs> I couldn't even go open the slide the other day because of purview. It wouldn't yeah. copy to the, the darn USB. Oh. And I had to tell everybody Rod sort of did the, you know, hello That's my funny. darling, hello my honey. <laughs> <laughs> until yeah. I until I got until I got the slide ready, right? That's you did the so, WD frog. So so the Defender for Cloud folks had rights management um on their deck. I don't know if you remember that and I and I couldn't open it myself. Well guess what? I figured out a way around it last night so I could post it to the GitHub repository for the workshop. So let nice. that be a lesson to everybody out there. Roger and I are part of Steel Team Six. You don't right. want none of this. <laughs> you, see, you see us coming, get low, hide your head. Well, there you go. I forgot. A- anybody can get access to that security lab that we did, by the way, and the decks that go with it. If you go to aka.ms slash predaylab346, that was room 346. So predaylab346. The entire workshop is out there. Obviously, like the lab guide is out there, but you need that scalable. We talked about scalable earlier. You need that scalable service for it to actually work, but it can give you some good ideas of how to create a workshop of your own. But the decks are out there for all the different sections as well. And Roger get out in a public place. It's 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock here, and no, it's right about to be happy up. hour. People are, people are starting to show up, starting to get drinks on, so we need to... We probably need to be quiet and get out of here. They right? want to be on the show. Yeah. It's so good yeah. seeing you two guys again. Uh, I'm I, I'm so happy you two got to meet finally. I want to come next year. <laughs> Hopefully we get to see each other before then. But I want to come next. You've sold me. I'm doing it. I'm not going to a beach yeah. next year. I'm going to my night Ignite is great. Night. Oh my goodness. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm so I'm so happy that you guys had success in your lab and uh, and have a good time tonight. Enjoy enjoy it. You know, Edward Edward put on a sweater. You know, you got a nice vest there. It looks expensive and warm. So make sure you just wear that tonight. You know, and uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna go change clothes and put some cool clothes on. This is my final day here. Roderick's still here for like nine days. I'm still here till Saturday. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I gotta don't think go I'm home, ever man. going home. I'm burned. I gotta I gotta get out of here, man. You know, so so we see. Well, maybe we'll see you next week according to what Brody does. But if not, we'll be back. We got the next. We have some some great announcements. We'll we'll create those announcements into something that's useful. Yeah. Uh, beyond what the Microsoft uh, Book of News is doing for the event, uh, I'll get back on Discord. My apologies. I'm a bad podcast host. Um, and that's it. Really good stuff. Really good to really shake hands with people, give people hugs, just to yeah. see people faces and, he and, does that, and give that good hugs. Yeah. Get those yeah, good old fa- the, the eight arm hug. It just multiplies as it goes around you, right? I think he wrapped his leg around me. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I did that. You know. So remember the, the episode of The Matrix when when Neo she grabs me, he shoots the elevator and we go up. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be that type of person. each other's eyes at the top. That's so specific. That's That's very specific. (laughs) All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning into the show. We'll be back. Have a great week.